What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, <clears throat> Daredevil. We saw a glimpse of perhaps what we will be getting going forward with the character. Pretty much, Brian, they're doing exactly what we said they should have done a long time. Was it this hard, Pop? Like three years ago or something like that? Was it this hard? Did it need to be this hard? You could have sent us the contracts back then. (laughs) And we would have saved all this time. We would have been had like probably like two seasons into Daredevil by now. But instead, (laughs) you want to How many years of our salary could they have made (laughs) by now with what they've already wasted? going down foolish paths before we finally got here ego but they've come to their senses brian at least we could you know applaud that in some sense what are your thoughts brian on the direction that they're taking now uh obviously it's good news right but but uh and was 18 episodes too good to believe Well, obviously, yes. And I would say everything that's transpired in the last week, and it really has all come to a head in the last week, underscores the fact that when Disney announced that, they clearly did not have a true plan and a true arc to deliver 18 episodes, which makes the announcement all the more foolish. I think one thing, you know, that Kevin Feige and Marvel really need, and, you know, it's Disney because Star Wars is already kind of long since gone into this category which is when they go to these cons and they go to these events at d23 and they start announcing these billboards and posters of what they're going to do they need to earn back some credibility because like this last couple of sequences where they kind of did it out of desperation and now all these ideas have fallen apart ain't nobody going to believe them the next time they put those up so they need to win back the faith so what are we talking about <laughs> daredevil Born again, dead again, and finally, <laughs> finally, maybe they're going to call it back home again. I don't know. The because, remix. <laughs> yeah, because in the in the past week, we have gotten confirmation and reports with strong leans toward confirmation that Eldon Henson, um, Deborah Ann Wall, who played Foggy and Karen, are coming back, that the fight coordinators and the stunt coordinators from Netflix have been hired. The showrunner is the showrunner isn't isn't um, Drew Goddard who helmed who did season one on Netflix, but it is the showrunner who did Punisher for Netflix, and they've brought in the directors uh, who did Loki season two. So we got a crew finally, mm-hmm. and obviously they've had Charlie Cox, Vincent D'Onofrio, and John Bernthal all along here, and they have finally acknowledged because D'Onofrio has confirmed this. The Netflix show has been made MCU canon, which means whatever show we get will now build upon and acknowledge the three wonderful seasons that Netflix gave us. So we're basically getting Daredevil season four ish called. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's my reaction. Really? Was it that hard? But listen, we can get excited. I'm legitimately excited. And the episode counts being cut. We don't say to what. But I would say it will be no more than ten. I would guess, given the Disney, the Disney track record on these these shows. Uh, I know Netflix used to do thirteen, and even that felt a little long at points, to be quite honest. Um, Disney has preferred six to nine for the Marvel shows, so I'm going to say no more than ten. I say no more than twelve, no less than ten. That's my range. So, but it's big. But we're, we're so we're basically now we can look forward to something that looks should look feel and the portrayals should be faithful and consistent and build upon what we saw in the Netflix show, which everybody liked. We certainly have something to look forward to, Brian. No question. But I tend to now feel as if there is going to be a bit of tension verse with with 
the people that they brought back to do it the right way versus the people that have been doing it have been told go do something else. There's going to be some tension there, I believe. I think that's fair. I mean, there's still some crew that's going to be left over. But the good news is, I think at the end of the day, the people that drive the bus here, it's like, it's Feige. And we'll get into like what, what ultimately precipitated this is actually kind of interesting. But cl clearly, look, D'Onofrio's squawking a lot. So clearly he is in the room pushing pretty hard to bring his character and bring that part of the story back. He's saying, now Charlie Cox has kept quiet, but he's, D'Onofrio is saying Charlie Cox is basically, you know, standing with him on all this. Um, and look, I mean, that would be, wouldn't that be dope? Like them two having a, a conversation at a bar about all this or whatever <laughs> and having drinks. Oh man, go ahead. Punisher showrunner. Why that's significant. Remember is that Marvel is overhauling how it does television. And they're going to more conventional television with a true showrunner. That's why that's significant is that you have someone who cut their teeth building a show in the traditional way over at Netflix, a Punisher show that was pretty successful. And then what you need visually and creatively are a couple of guys who can man the camera very effectively. And I think Benson and Moorhead showed you in Loki season two, they're pretty good behind the camera. Like we don't have to worry about the visuals that much. So like now that we got the fights and stunts back in the hands that gave us the real single cam fight scene and some of the memorable fight scenes in, in the Daredevil show, um, fights with Nobu and stuff like that. Like, great. Like, I don't see why, I don't see why this show should now be somehow worse than the one we had. I think there's, there's real potential for this to at least be in the same conversation, if not even go a little bit beyond, um, what we got before. Look, we, there are no guarantees and like we've been burned on this stuff before, but I tend to follow personnel and like, this at least is giving this show the best possible chance to be a great show over at Disney. Brian, I've said this over and over again, <clears throat> and then we'll go into uh, what led to all this. Yeah. That third season of, of Daredevil deserves some sort of at least nomination, man. For the performances, the performance all around was, I think was A plus hmm? from people I'd never seen act before, right? I've never seen on screen before. Um, outside of the, the regulars. And it was amazing. Yeah. And so I hope we can get back to at least even having the conversation of the possibility of that happening. Instead of having the conversation we've been having lately as these things, what, who, who's running this stuff over there? <laughs> but what led up to this, Brian? So the report is that the original take of the 18 episode born again was they the reason why that Eldon Henson <clears throat> and Deborah Ann Wall were not contacted to come back was that they were going to kill both of their characters off screen and that was going to be the motivation for Matt Murdock being purely a lawyer and not Daredevil for the predominant early half of the show that he wouldn't appear in the suit so this shows you how spread Kevin Feige is now because that got completed, approved technically, and they were moving ahead with it to the point where they were shooting scenes. And then it crossed Kevin Feige's desk. What? <laughs> and he basically ripped that up, stopped it in its tracks, fired everyone that was involved with it and started over. I mean, that's basically the report. Brian, Kevin, if you want a watchdog, <laughs> I will make sure that anything that crosses your desk is excellent. Think about the money spent for something that's going to be thrown. I mean, only the, only Disney can do it because they got the money to do it. But what what a waste of people's time but that's not even like a to me like when i hear that and it's i mean by all account i mean that checks all the boxes for me so i'll go with that that's true again who like okay we kind of know who thought it was a good idea because we know who the original writers were on this show but how did it get that far how 
Yeah, that's why. Right. Take yeah. like. I I don't care what spin or creativity you want to put on the Matt Murdock story. The arrogance that you could say he doesn't even need to be Daredevil for basically half the show, yeah. like that violates like every rule of television and entertainment, like known to man. Like I just like that's DOA. Like that like, would like, never what is this? go like, anywhere. Like, like, <clears throat> And then, and then halfway, that's all people will be talking about. It's like you're setting yourself up for disappointment, and, and you, and you're just putting stuff out there, say, announcing all these things, and and not realizing what the implications are. And not only that, but there's such like when I heard that, I was like, are these people also not at all talking to the? I thought this was an interconnected world. So by the time this show was supposed to come out in its original form, we would already have seen Daredevil in his traditional costume fighting Echo. We would already have seen Daredevil in his red and yellow USC Trojans costume in She-Hulk. All he was doing was wearing the costume. But then in his yeah. own show, he wasn't going to wear the costume for half the like. What? Well, I'm out, man. Honey. That doesn't see. That's the that's the stuff that like drives me crazy. Because you're not building a story when you do that. Yeah. Listen, and we're not in the room. We're not execs. We're not in there. We, these guys could be really uh, pro. They could be pros. Or they are pros at what they do. But they they're swimming in 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 waters they're not supposed to be swimming in when you when you're making decisions greenlining it and, and doing it and thinking that it's okay. The wrong people are in the room. That's just the wrong people are in the room for such for such discussions on, on what to deliver. Yes, exactly, exactly. So the good news, I think, right now is the end of Echo gives you a guardrail into the Daredevil show, right? That clearly D'Onofrio is going to become mayor of New York, that, that credit scene, which is a classic piece of his comics look yeah. great that's all i need like that's a guardrail for the story that's a, a good one um we also now have the guardrail of your calling seasons one through three canon so that gives them a sense of like all right you know we 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 don't need to vent we don't need to venture too far from from home uh from hell's kitchen to make this a, a great show and i think actually bringing back the same fight and stunt coordinators helps you avoid a little of what we saw in Echo in the sense of they were clearly trying to copy some of the fight choreography without doing it as well. I think when you actually bring back the people who created that in the first place, they would be smart enough to recognize we can't just rehash what we did. We have to continue to build, evolve, and push beyond. So like if we saw another single cam hallway fight scene, like it's not going to have the same impact as it had in yeah. season one of Daredevil. It won't, right? Yeah. But those guys are probably smart enough to give you something else. Different. And that's what makes it exciting. Something different, something in a different location. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's what they did. That, that second time that they did it, and I think it was the second season or third. Stairwell was the second one. The right? stairwell. It was, it was, hallway was the first one. He fights this stairwell, I think, in the second one, single cam, right? They go up and down. That was what they added. Yeah, and then he leaves. It was sort of like a video game. They they were able to do that. The same sort of technique in terms of the one shot or the, 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 the perception of a one shot and make it flow. But it was in different places. Mm -hmm. And they can do that over and over again and just be real slick about how and clever about how they do it. That's it. They can just keep, as long as it's not in the, like, it can't be in the same hallway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It can't be. Yeah, no, exactly. So, exactly. But I mean, yeah, they were yeah. also smart enough to not always do that, right? Like Frank Castle in the prison is not all a single cam yeah. fight scene. And it's awesome. Yeah. Like, it's an amazing <laughs> fight scene, right? But it's, it's a different style. So like, that's why I think I have more trust that these guys will look at what they've done and say like this is the level we need to be at but this is not exactly what people need to see again we need to yeah. we need to add yeah so it's... uh yeah daredevil season one season two seven the, season three we saw the progressions and we expect that progression to continue especially 
you know, bringing the people that uh, sort of uh, gave us those, those, that material at that time. So we expect it to continue. And if the and hopefully they do a Godzilla minus one. Y'all had y'all chance. Ah. We, now it's us again. And we're going to show you how it's done. Amen. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the changes happening over at the with Daredevil the the decision to bring it down from 18 to whatever we saying 10 to 12 I'm saying 10 to 12 minus no more than 10 right yeah I'm saying it's going to be I'm guessing it's going to be 8 to 10 but yeah yeah I'm thinking 10 to 12 I'm hoping 10 to 12 um, let us know in the comment section below hit that like and subscribe hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report the show goes on! Yeah!